Welcome back. back. <laughs> Talking is hard. Welcome back, guys. Uh, great comments, great questions. We appreciate it. Ricardo, good to have you aboard. Thanks for the kind comments in the chat. That's the best way for us to communicate with you guys and kind of get a vibe for where you want us to take the show as we go along here. But Ira, I asked you this question before the break. Do the Heat have a new closer? And do they have a new guy that you're a little bit more confident in the ball being in his hands down the stretch? The floor is yours. You know, I think we're sort of forgetting because of the knee injury and the time out of the lineup, what Tyler Hero has done and what he can do again. So I, I think those situations where maybe it's not the last shot of the game, but down the stretch you need offense. I think I think Tyler Hero is a guy who will be out there. I think he's a guy who's willing, and he's a shot maker. He makes something out of nothing. Perhaps so let me, let me cut you off really quickly sure. because you immediately went the direction of, of somebody that is not one of the two players that I was mentioning. And I think this is my and, – and so let's, you know, I'm, I'm, it's like all cloak and dagger and, and mystery here. Jimmy Butler's late game decision making and the shots that he he has chosen to take down the stretch of games, it's gotten the Heat in trouble. And you look at at his stats shooting three pointers down the stretch, cl clutch shots. It's 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 terrible. And and it's like <laughs> at some point you don't you hold have back. To Clay. Don't hold back. <laughs> no, I look and and I think Jimmy Butler's a fantastic player. And by no means is this like bash Jimmy Butler. He's unbelievable. He's when you talk about a guy who's an all around everything you want, he's great. The late game stuff has become a problem. And, you know, it, it, we go back to, to missing the layup in Atlanta and then choosing to shoot three pointers and settle for jumpers when I think everybody knows he's best when he's attacking the basket. He did hit that three pointer in double overtime in Charlotte, but it was after missing two late jumpers, one of them a three-pointer at the uh, end of both regulation and, and overtime. overtime yeah. Meanwhile, they don't even get to a double overtime if Kyle Lowry doesn't go crazy in overtime. And I'm getting to the point, Ira, where I'm more comfortable with the ball in Kyle Lowry's hands down the stretch. And I was asking you this to compare the two, but you immediately go to Tyler Hero. And Ira, I'm not sure that I'm not more comfortable with the ball in Tyler Hero's hands down the stretch, and especially – last possession of games than I am Jimmy Butler right now. And it's not that Jimmy Butler can't. We've seen him do this. When he is attacking the basket late in games, he's almost impossible to stop. It's when he settles for the jump shots. But at some point, that becomes who you are down the stretch. And if that doesn't change, Ira, I'd rather see the ball in either Lowry or Tyler Hero's hands. Well, I'm, I'm assuming the uh, that that the Ferrara girls are, are, are at school, so I can maybe curse. But I'll just I'll put it this way. I think Jimmy has taken a what the F approach when it comes to some of this because it's just regular season clay. I think Jimmy has just been, I'm going to shoot the three and go for the win. I'm going to try a shot here that maybe I shouldn't take otherwise because you know what? It's one of 82 and we're in first place and we're having a good season and I'm tired and the game is late. I don't think we're getting clutch Jimmy Butler where it's mentally focused all in. I must win this game right now because this game matters. And I've seen this from some of the guys on the team also. It's sort of, eh, I made it, eh, I missed it, let's go home. You know when the shot when you're down by two and you shoot the three anyway, and it's sort of one of those let's go home shots? How right, many right. has Jimmy taken all year? He's taken a ton of them. Dwayne Wade used to take a ton of them during the regular season also. Look, That's we, a had good similar, we had a similar debate with Dwayne Wade. Why is he and, and by the, the way, basket? let me cut you off again because I love cutting you off. But game, <laughs> game one of the playoffs against the Bucks last year, when it got down to that point, he didn't settle for the three-pointer. He drove, and he sent it to overtime. So that backs up your point that when it really matters, he yeah, seems to is, know and rise to w that w This is WTF time of year. And, and I know people don't want to hear that because they spend their hard-earned dollars and they spend three hours in front of the TV and they want to see a moment. But I just think that's – I think it's completely different in the playoffs. You know, again, all these people are talking about Jimmy not as a closer. And I mentioned this, you know, in, in a previous segment, is Jimmy Butler in 2020 was everything you wanted as a closer. When the Heat went to the NBA Finals against the Lakers and the moments along the way there, getting fouled in the final second. What was it against Boston with like two-tenths of a second to put the game away when he was fouled on a shot? He's going to be a different player than these guys are pacing themselves. You don't want to hear that, but you also don't want to see Jimmy Butler going down in a heap during a regular season game in Charlotte when you have bigger games ahead of you. Hey, you know what? Kyle Lowry's been this way also. Kyle Lowry could shoot the ball and do a lot more also. 
But first, it's just December. It's just January. It's just February. I know we're not supposed to talk that way because you try to win every game because there's heat. Capital C. Or I don't know the TV was great. <laughs> it makes it look like a C. Capital C heat culture. But it's not the same, Clay. It's a regular season game. And yes, you'd like to get the W in the higher seed and the home court. But I think there's a completely different mentality, almost to the point when you and I were discussing playoff rotation. I think you do need to take a deep breath and say to yourself, but what about in the playoffs? Will a player one through eight of my rotation be a playoff player? We mentioned Omar Yurtsevin before. I think he has to grow into that. I think he'd get bullied in the playoffs when it's all or nothing, when your flagrant foul meter gets reset and you're mm -hmm. not going to get a one-game suspension. So there's certain players I need to see it in the playoffs. God bless Gabe Vincent. I've never seen it in the playoffs. God bless Caleb Martin. Never seen it in the playoffs. I know what Jimmy in the playoffs is. I know that Kyle Lowry's a playoff son of a bitch. Sorry if the girls are still around. You know, and, and, I, and I know that he got it done because Toronto won a championship, not just with Kawhi, but with him. Do you and know, we know I Tyler. Think Bam, I think Bam out of battle. It's certainly Tyler Hero in the Boston series, Eastern Conference Finals 2020. So we still have to see that. So don't discount Jimmy being playoff Jimmy by what we're seeing now. At times, again, don't aggregate this, but at times some of these guys just don't give an F because they know there's bigger moments ahead. I think at a moment of truth, when Jimmy Butler needs one or two points and knows it could lead to him being, you know, flopping down or going hard to the court, he will do that in the playoffs. I'm not so sure he'll do it in mid-February. All right, you talked me down. You actually did change my perspective on this, and I can't believe I'm saying that, that you actually changed. But, but it, it's... It, it makes more sense when you put it in the context of how much does this game matter? And it's not that the games aren't important, and it's not that, that that possession isn't the most important possession of that game, but is it worth risking what you might be risking in that scenario? And also, look, I, I it also made me think of what P.J. Tucker said the other night after the Brooklyn game, where they blew, whatever, a 20-point lead, and they asked him, in the post-game news conference, I think Anthony asked him the question about, you know, what what is it that you learn about this team? You know, how how do you feel when you when you blow a lead like that? And Anthony uses a lot kinder words than I am because he's a really nice guy. Um, but how does it feel when you give up a lead like that and then you just kind of hold on by the skin of your teeth? And PJ said, I love it. And he said, Look, you never want to blow a twenty-point lead, but you have to figure out ways to pull games out in these moments. And it's almost like the Heat veterans, your Jimmy Butler's, your P.J. Tucker's, your Kyle Lowry's, even Bam's getting to that point, I think, although he's not quite there yet when it comes to like being, uh, you know, understanding that regular season, Bam's going to go all in with every game. Um, but I think they're starting to get that the regular season is when you figure yourself out for the playoffs more than it is when at all costs it's you know I, I remember phil jackson was famous famous for this in la that he would let the lakers blow a 20 point lead and he would never call a timeout and and i mean the announcers would be screaming i used to listen <laughs> to, to chick hearn and Stu lance do the games and and chick, uh, he's not calling a timeout why isn't he calling a timeout but that was just what phil jackson liked to do he wanted to see his team especially in the regular season figure it out by themselves because there are going to be those moments in the playoffs where you don't have daddy to hold your hand. Like you need somebody, you you need to find it within yourself. You need to rely on the guy next to you as opposed to just, oh, let's call let's call a timeout and try to use this pause to break the other team's run. So I guess you the answer to the question is you have not replaced your permanent closer with Kyle Lowry when it comes to the moments of truth and the games that matter the most and the legacy make or break games. And, but what and, you and, do have is somebody in Kyle Lowry that you trust immensely down the stretch. And, and somebody also in Tyler Hero, when he comes back, that you trust immensely down the stretch. And there's nothing wrong with that. They're not quite Kevin Durant. I mean, they're not, they're, nobody is. You're not, right. not going to have a Kyrie Irving. You're not going to have, when you play the best teams in these last, you know, your, your Brooklyn's, your Philadelphia's, even your Milwaukee's, even though Giannis can't shoot free throws, they're going to have, the better player on the floor. They're going to have the more elite, the better, the more talented player. But you have more guys maybe that you trust to take that shot, that you can put the ball in their hands and find the matchup that you like. You know what? We could almost do a playoff ratings because I think what matters most in the playoffs are closers. 
So in other words, you mentioned Brooklyn. Kevin Durant might be the game's ultimate closer, but Kyrie Irving is probably right there with him. They have two closers. We've seen Jimmy do it in the 2020 playoffs. We've seen Kyle Lowry do it in the 2019 playoffs. The Heat have two closers. Philadelphia, we've never really seen Joel Embiid do it because it's hard for a big man to do it because he has to get the ball from someone. We've seen James Harden fall flat on his face at times yeah, in those fair. situations, in all those Houston almost kind of moments. So you wonder about them. Cleveland's the perfect example. I spoke to a scout last week, and he basically told me, Cleveland's just glad to be in the playoffs. But come the moments of truth, is Jarrett Allen going to be the guy? Is Larry Markinen going to be the guy? Is Evan Mobley as a rookie going to be the guy? As much as I love Darius Garland, when those lights come on, is he going to be the guy? So when I look through these East standings, look, say what you want. Milwaukee did it. They did it with Drew Holiday. They did it with the highly underrated Chris Middleton. And like you mentioned, they still have Giannis. They have their closers at the end of the game. So when you go through it, you have to say, which guys do you have? Boston's playing great now. We still need to see Tatum and Jalen Brown in those playoff moments. The Heat have two guys who have the gold star seal of approval of being closers. Yeah. The Nets have at least two guys who have the gold star seal of approval, which Ben Simmons has the opposite. You know, he sort of has, you know, like a negative mark there because of what happened in Philadelphia. Your playoffs are going to come down to your closers. I feel confident that the Heat have at least two. And maybe Tyler Hero, if you can mask his defense, can be the third guy for you there also. That's what matters. So when we look at the standings, it doesn't matter how the jumble works out. It matters in those series who's going to step forward. I still think Kyle Lowry will step forward. I still think Jimmy Butler will step forward because they have to step forward. I don't know why this didn't hit me before, but you mentioned Brooklyn and, and Kyrie and Kevin Durant. And then you also go back to, hey, you know, the mayor of New York is may ultimately decide how far Brooklyn can go in the playoffs. Did Goran pick Brooklyn on the off chance that he has to be Kyrie at home? Oh, absolutely. Home I mean, isn't that crazy I, that, I mean, they, Goran, and look, I'm not saying Goran is Kyrie, but when you talk about what he can bring to an offense, and when we were talking, because we had so many questions last week about, hey, would the Heat sign Goran Dragic? And I think that you and I were both on the same page on, even though we got yelled at, and I even got yelled at on Twitter later on that night after they lost, which is Goran wouldn't have had the defined role when this team was fully healthy and ready to roll. And, you know, it, it's you can't really play him a lot of minutes next to Tyler Hero because your your deficiencies in the backcourt defensively come up too strong. Sure. And and you can't you can't have those guys on the floor at the same time in the playoffs for long stretches. But if you're Brooklyn and you've got a team built with Kyrie Irving in mind at that spot, Goran Dragic easily slides into the role of a creator, shooter, scorer, guy that uh, Kyrie's, Kyrie can steal the ball pretty well, but he's not somebody that you want as your dominant on-ball defender. Right. Goran's not somebody you want as your, your predominant on-ball defender in the backcourt. So it's like you can see the fit of where he fits in there. And, and so bringing this full circle to what you were saying, I, I probably have a little bit more confidence in Embiid than than maybe you do even though we haven't seen it necessarily but I saw it enough I think in you know when when Miami played them a few years ago and he was just kind of get it's Cleveland's a great point but when you're looking at the power rankings of the closers the Heat have more guys that you're comfortable with than anybody else in but even if they don't have the one guy that you have the utmost confidence in I think you are more than B-level confident in Tyler Hero, Jimmy Butler, and Kyle Lowry in those moments of truth. Whereas when you look at a Brooklyn, you obviously are not comfortable with Ben Simmons. When you look at Philadelphia, how many times did James Harden have to fall flat for, for you to, to finally right. say, okay, th those are really great player. But in those moments of truth, it just does not happen. So I, I think it's a great point. And then your point about Cleveland is well taken as well. Yeah. And again, to go back to Goron, it, Goron's interesting because – if Kyrie doesn't play home games, there's a whole schedule for Goron. However, if Kyrie's cleared for home games, all of a sudden you have Kyrie, you have Seth Curry, you might have Joe Harris coming back. Patty Mills has been very good off their bench. Goron's sort of facing a, a thing here where either he's going to be a big part of this or no part of it, depending how that plays out. I think his relationship with Steve Nash, who was his mentor early yeah. in his career as a player in Phoenix, had a big part to do with it. And I think there also was some candor for the Heat that, hey, We've got what we have. 
We have Vic is going to be our Goron right now to see if he could fit in late in the season. We don't feel comfortable trying to try to fit him in and also carve out minutes for you. So there might be nothing here for you. At least there was honesty there also. But yeah, I would be concerned heat first round against the Nets. If you're going against Durant and going against Irving on the road and going against Goron at home, it can get really dicey. And I don't think we'll know that depending on where the heat finished for this reason. When you get to the play-in round, 7, 8, 9, and 10, you don't know who's going to be the 7th seed and who's going to be the 8th seed. In other words, yep. uh, first round game, maybe it'll be Brooklyn against Atlanta. The winner of that gets the number 7 seed. Well, maybe you don't want to be number 2 then. But the loser of that could wind up being the number 8 seed. So maybe you didn't want to be number 1. So really, if you want to avoid either of those teams, you might want to drop down and be the number three seed and say, okay, we'll take our chances with Boston or Toronto. Leading sort of full circle, I don't think you can play the seeding games because when the season ends, when we hit that April 10th, that Sunday, you still won't know who the seven or eight seed in your conference is. And you probably possibly won't know that until Wednesday or Thursday of that week. That's where it gets interesting. You can't play that game. You might as well go for it. The greater good and Jason both bring up really interesting points I want to get to in the next segment. What about Tyler Hero and his role coming off the bench? And also, I, it kind of blends into what you were just saying about Goran and Oladipo. Uh, and then also a question about Duncan Robinson and the fact that we've seen him come off the bench and, and, and play pretty well, too. But I think this is a different scenario. We'll explain why. That and a lot more coming up right here on Inside the Bank. <laughs> 